this afternoon. And um, it's interesting to see that uh, uh, video that we saw of GCO. Because I'm sure there are a lot of companies like GCO here in the room. Companies which are SMEs, expanding, can win contracts like GCO. And as you know, if you're one of those companies, you're winning your next contract you on a roll. One of the big partners that you're looking for is your bank. Because obviously once you win a contract, you've got things to look at, like your working capital, the bank guarantees that you need to put in place to win contracts with the likes of Carrara or Leighton or Chevron. Now if you've got a bank that is with you all the way, then it's going to be. And you don't have to know anything about it. But if there is a limit, because the bank might not be able to help, because you reach, they reach security or credit guidelines, and you've reached their limit, you're not able to help, then maybe you might want to know about it. Very simply put, as I explained to Hugh this afternoon, we are Australia's official stretch bank. It's official because we are owned by the federal government. It's bank because while we are set up by the federal government 54 years ago, we're not funded by them. Okay, so they initially 54 years ago gave us some seed money and said, go away and prosper, which we did. And over time, we make our own money, we pay our own people, we make a little profit, and we give the government a dividend. So we are a bank. But the, diff the thing in the middle was stretch. So our role is to stretch beyond the capability of your bank. That's our mandate. That's the mandate that the federal government has given us. <coughs> what we do is to stretch beyond what your bank can do to enable you to do the project that you're looking at. Obviously, because we are a bank, there are eligibility criteria. It's not a secret. The bank then provides you with the working capital or the bank guarantee. I can't do it direct. It has to go through your bank. I cannot compete with your bank. I am not cheaper than your bank. That's not my mandate. So in the first instance, it's always talk to your bank. If the bank can't help, that's where I come in. So as it says right on top, our role is complementary. We do not compete. We fill in what we call a market gap. Maybe about 52 out of the last 54 years, all we could help were exporters. So if you came up to me and said, for example, I am drilling, I'm doing drilling works or form work or excavation work, or I'm in mine rehabilitation, I would say, are you an exporter? No, sorry, I can't help you. About three years ago, I started coming to Perth on a 5-4 basis, one week out of every four. And as I'm walking up and down St. George's Terrace, as you do, I worked out that there are very few exporters. Most companies are actually in the supply chain. Very few companies are the final exporters. So what happens to everybody in the middle? So we had a look at what we call the FA Act, and I say mandate, and guess what? You are an exporter. If you are in the supply chain, and what you do is important, critical to the final thing happening, you are an exporter. We may be able to help you. It's not only for companies which are domestically doing projects where the private thing is exporting. Assume you are an established company and you decide that the next big thing you're going to do is go to Africa. Because that's what everyone is doing. China, Africa. Now let's say for example to do that project in Africa you've got to put your drill rigs there or you've got to set up an office there and you go to your bank and they say forget it. I'm not going to have an asset sitting in Africa. What happens if, you know, they come and burn the thing down or the government takes, takes over the whole mine site? I'm going to lose that asset. If that's the case, we may be able to help you. Again, to your bank. We work with companies which are from SMEs all the way to large companies. I work with SMEs. That's my role. So the sorts of companies we're looking for, no startups. Why? Because by the time you come to me, your bank has taken everything. So I am relying on the fact that you can do what you say you do. So how do I do that? 
Well, we've got our own engineers, and that's the first thing they do. They basically come along and make sure that if we're going to help you, our due diligence will include financial, legal, technical, the whole work. And we get comfortable that, yes, this is a contract that makes sense, you have the wherewithal technical to, to do the job, and financially you can pay back the loan. The only problem is it's a stretch, and the bank cannot stretch, we'll provide the guarantee to the bank, and we'll charge you for what we do. So, we start off with companies typically in the range of five million and above. We have exceptions, and you know, I encourage you again, a lot of this is very big picture. So if you have special circumstances relating to your company, please come and talk to us. When I say us, it's me. I am at it first. So. so here we are. If you are in that uh, list of companies, please come and talk. So the sorts of things we do, as I mentioned, working capital to, to fulfill an export contract, bank guarantees, and even if, for example, you win a contract and you decide that you need to buy a piece of equipment, let's say you need to buy a new rig and it's a million dollars, and you might want to pay it over three years, again, the bank is not able to help. Because this is a rig that's going into a contract, okay, at the end of the day, the gold, the coal, the iron ore is going to be exported, and what you're doing, sorry about this, is critical the whole, to the whole thing, we may be able to help you. Finally, case studies because they say a lot more than what I can. This is a company that is registered in Queensland, but its owners are in WA. It's an SME. They won a contract in uh, Queensland for QGE, which is an oil and gas contract. Went to their bank, which is St. George, and because St. George's uh, credit limits were stretched, the, uh, the bank couldn't help the company and introduced the company to it. And we were able to help that company with both working capital and also bank guarantees. Here's another example of a company that I worked with, Binder. The company has been around for 25 years, based in Qdale. Won a contract for volume. But because in 2008 there was a GFC and their numbers didn't look that flash, the bank was not able to help. So what they were looking for here is $500,000 warranty bonds over five years to do a $10 million project. And that's what we helped them with. That was $500,000, which enabled them to do a $10 million project. This is an example of something that is done on the bigger side, where EPIC was actually able to help a company that was putting in an infrastructure piece, which is the coal turbine. But if you're working even in the infrastructure side, not the actual mine, that also, and as long as the infrastructure is important to the final export, you're still an exporter. So that's it. In short, if you're a company that is stand bank, you've gone to your bank and you might not be able to help, ask them to talk to us. Ask them to talk to me. My name is Leela Hanson, and I work for Australia's official stretch bag. Thank you for your time.